I want to thank uh, Pastor Derek Hong for giving me the privilege to, of giving you this message today. I want to give the title, How to be Truly Rich, for this message. Turn with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 12, 9 verses, starting from verse 13 to 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, the crowd was following Jesus, but a big crowd, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus answered, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? And then he said to them, Watch out. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. For your life does not consist in the abundance of your possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. And then he said to them, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger barns. And there I will store my crops and grain and surplus grain. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of year, plenty of grain, grain laid up for many years. Take it easy, eat, drink and be merry. And but God said to him, You fool, the night this night your very life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is what it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. This is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, in the New Testament. It talks about our life and our possession. Let's look at what Jesus said in the beginning. He was preaching. And then there's this young man among the crowd went to see him, seeking help. And he said, Master, tell my brother to divide his, the inheritance with me, asking Jesus to settle a family matter. But Jesus didn't want to get involved. Why? Because the whole matter is a family matter. It's not a question of right or wrong that he was disinherited. But how sure are we that the father intended to disinherit him, very sure. Because in the Jewish tradition, no male is disinherited if you die without planning, without a will. The male will get a larger share than the female and the elder brother will get more than one share than the younger brother. So it is not an automatic thing that this man was disinherited. So, what did Jesus say? Jesus knew the intent of his heart. And then, look at verse 15, very, very unique. And then Jesus said to them, there, verse 15, Jesus said to them, why did the writer of this chapter use the word, we use the plural pronoun, them? It was only one person who asked him the question. And yet, the writer of Gospel of Luke chapter 12, use a plural pronoun to address a matter. Instead of answering him, the writer say, He said to them. Why them? Why not him? Let me explain. The word them was used by a writer because greed affects almost all of us. Not just that gentleman. We are among the crowd. So greed affects us. I want to share with you a couple of uh, instances. I'll start with one. I'm in the stock market, okay? And I talk to people who in the market. 
They don't think that what they do, what they are doing, uh, is is wrong. I give you an example. I said you buy a share, one dollar, right? And you intend to sell it, but the market run up so what that you are able to sell it for two dollar. Now after you have sold it for two dollar, the price kept on running to three, four, five dollar, but you're not happy. Because you didn't sell at the peak, you grumble. I I should have waited. Isn't that true? You buy a share. On the other hand, you buy a share for one dollar, and you sell it for three dollar, and the price keep on coming down, but you are very happy. Why? Because it keep on coming down. Why should you be happy when somebody buy at three dollar and lose money? This is what our heart is. Greed affects all of us. I tell people that there is no difference between their greed and my greed. There is no difference. The difference, if there is, lies in the degree, not in kind, because all of us have inherited the Adamic nature. When men first sin, so when men first sin, greed comes into our picture. Lust, envy, unforgiveness—all this come to dominate our life, and we think we are good. And so Jesus knew the in man's heart. He said to them, "Watch out! Be on guard against all kinds of greed. It's not just money. It can be even be food." Or it can be even including you. Sometimes when I hear my wife Sunday getting up to dress, she open the cupboard. Don't know what to dress. I say, what is this? Why? Because many wives are fond of dressing the same old favorite dress. The few that they look nice on it. Then the rest. We leave it. I have, I have many times I've told my my wife, my daughter, anything you don't use for more than a year. At first, I was quite harsh. I say a six month. Please consider giving them away. You can afford it. We can afford to give them away and learn to give them away. Now, in order for us to be truly rich, we must understand these few things. This few principle. First, there is a difference between being rich and having riches. You can have millions, but you're not rich because you're unable to share or give away what is surplus to you. Because why? When you don't know what is enough, you never have enough. I'll、share with you a story that happened about four years, nearly four years ago. In February two o one eight, the Guardian, the UK newspaper, reported this news that a group of nearly eight hundred doctors in Quebec protested against large pay increases that would benefit them. The government want to increase their salary. In an open letter to the Canadian government, they expressed concern that they were being paid too much, and actually asked not to have the salary increase. Have you ever heard it that you are given salary increase and you protested against salary increase? They they added that the intended increment be distributed to other healthcare sector like nurses and all. Such selflessness is admirable, and to be emulated. I read this letter to you that they wrote to the government. Canadian doctors say cancel our pay rise and spend the money elsewhere. Nearly 800 doctors and medical residents in the Canadian province of Quebec have signed a letter protesting against plans to raise their pay, arguing that the funds would be better. Or better spend on other areas of the province, provinces' beleaguered healthcare si system. Continue this way. 
We Quebec doctors are asking that the salary increases granted to physician be cancelled and the same resources of the system be better distrib be distributed for the good of the healthcare workers. So far, the letter has attracted 789 signatures of support from GP, specialists, residents and medical students. It has attracted attention around the world. Sure, would you think this is possible in Singapore? I think it is possible, but highly unlikely. The letter says, recent pay rises negotiated by the professional association was shocking given the draconian cut that have left nurses, orderlies and others overworked and underpaid, as well as leading to a widespread lack of services for patients. The only thing that seems to be immune to the cut is our salary. Amazing. I chose to use this example in a book that I wrote recently. The book is How Much Money Is Now. You see, friends, if you don't know what is enough for yourself, if you don't know what is enough, you will never have enough. It's a fact. So the, the few things, the first thing you must acknowledge this is that God owns everything. Whatever little or much you and I have is a, a stewardship assignment given to us by Him. So we are all steward. So it's, it's not true that you cannot be rich. But in this particular story in chapter 12, you look, he used the word I, me, and myself at least nine times in a short paragraph. I will do this. I will build my one. I will have this. It's I, me, and myself. When we talk about sin, we are not talking about adultery alone. We are not talking about murder, killing. The word sin starts with S. And in the middle word of sin is I. And then N, S-I-N. What does it stand for? It stands for self-incorporated. That's what sin is. It's me, I, myself. God is not against His people having riches. He is against those who accumulate Riches only for themselves. That's what he says here in the verse 20. You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you leave behind? You now I help people to plan the estate for many years. And this is one example. In 1991, I still remember... The Malaysian government chose to abolish the estate duty law so that when people die, their family, their beneficiaries do not have to pay estate duty. So it was removed. In the insurance conference in that year, the Inland Revenue Officer spoke on this. He gave us inside information that law is going to be changed. And he gave a very uh, humorous story that I really love, but the rest didn't hear what he said. He could not artic articulate his words clearly. He said his colleague in the estate duty division wrote a letter to a young man whose father just died. Father was a very wealthy plantation owner. And the letter asked to the lawyer, was addressed to the lawyer, did your client's son the clients, the old man, die. Die, testate or intestate, they are technical term. To die testate means to die with a will. To die intestate means to die without a will. So when a young man, 21 years old, saw the letter, he didn't check the dictionary, the meaning of testate or intestate. He scribbled a reply, sent it to the lawyer, and this is what he said. My father did not die testate or intestate, wealthy plantation, because he died in the rubber estate. 
quite funny. So what does it mean? Jesus told this parable, shared this parable, in verse 20 and 21 that our life is not eternal on earth. Our life is temporary. Our wealth fluctuates and is also temporary. Now, one warning to the rich. You will lose your wealth during your lifetime or at death. Don't forget that. You will lose your wealth during your lifetime or if you don't lose it during your lifetime, you will lose it at death. Just about a week ago, a few days ago, I came across a story, just a recent story of a very famous family. Very fa- one of the wealthiest, not the wealthiest, but one of the wealthiest. Five sons battling over a multi-billion estate of this man who died some years ago. And the high court judge presiding over the case gave very good advice to those who contested in this estate. You are all brothers. Why can't you settle this out of court? The longer the case dragged, the worse it is for the unity of a family. You will, it will further divide the family. And this is the warning. I don't know whether they listened to him or not. I doubt so at this stage because it was not reported that they have settled out of court. And it's very, very strange that the more you have, the more you want to fight. Give you a better story. This is very, very... This happened more than 35 years ago. I know this family, this old lady, that time she was in, in the early, early 80s, she did not sign her will in time. And she died also in that state without a will. She had two daughters. The first daughter had children. The second daughter is not married. By virtue of the law, who inherited everything? You may think two daughters will share, even though she died without a will. The law states the elder daughter will be the sole heir to her estate. The second daughter will get nothing. Why? Because the second daughter has no legal adoption paper. She was adopted many years ago as a baby. Now in the old days, when you adopt someone or when a family adopts a child, usually what they give, they will give an ang pao as a token of appreciation. They don't go to the right channel to have legal adoption. Many of them are like that, but not today. Today all have adoption paper. Most of them have. And so you can see that the reason why the elder daughter benefited everything from this old lady's estate. So I, I, I'm, I'm very familiar with, with this family and I was thinking, how am I going to help this lady to get something? Because if there were adoption paper, she would have received half of the old lady's estate. So I hesitated because when you talk about money, my dear friend, it's a very sensitive subject. So I hesitated for a couple of days trying to think how best to approach the matter. Believe it or not. Instead, she called me, wanted to have to meet me for tea. Uh, I, th- I knew she's going to talk about this matter, but I didn't know her intention. She said, this the law is not very fair to my sister. Why must I get everything? Is it okay for me to give her something out of my entitlement? She wanted to share the estate with the younger sister. Younger sister not married. 
I said, sure, why not? And the amount she intended to give is more than half of the estate. Why? This woman is amazing. All these years, uh, at least six, seven years, she had been taking care of my mother, not, not me, she. This kind of attitude is lacking today. Today, we are in a grabbing society. The more we have, the more we want. The more we want, the less satisfied we are. I had the opportunity to meet a, a semi-retiree. He, he was in semi-retirement at a market in Marine Terrace. He used to work for a very wealthy man who had three sons who are helping him in the business. And this old man died without much planning. And so, but he continued to work for at least a few more months. Then one day he told me, Benny, I think I need to resign. I said, why? The son's no good to you. No, they are too good to me. They are better than the father? Yes. You know why you don't, you don't want to work? You can stay or No. Because they want me to take side. That means to say that they want to fight in court. I have shared this part in the year 2002 in a previous message. Part of it, I'm going to share, I'm going to repeat it. Sometimes my wife asks me, hey, you go and the same church or share, do you write down what message you're sharing or not? I say, I don't. Then why if you repeat the message? I say, my, my friend Benny Ho say, any message not worth repeating is not worth preaching. I think that was a good one. So I said, you intend to yeah? Then he gave me a rhyme in Mandarin. Wow, so powerful. I say, this is good. Since I'm giving talk, I speak at church. I want to borrow this rhyme. Okay, la. you know what he say in Chinese? 人在天堂, 钱在银行, 儿女在公堂, Man in heaven, money in the bank, children in court. I repeat that. 人在天堂, 钱在银行, 儿女在公堂. Wow, I say, 跟我写我要用. And this is the problem. If you don't have, I can understand, but many of these people who go to court to battle with one another, they are not in the category of have not. They are in the category, category of have much, and yet they want to fight. I remember many years ago, the, the old Chief Justice Yang Pangao was deliberating on the case of a very famous family in Singapore fighting over the mother's estate. And then after making the decision, he said, why you all want to fight? You all have so much already. And this, this is what he said. Everybody kept quiet. And so in a sense, the same thing. To be rich is more important than to have riches. One, as I said, God owns everything. Secondly, our wealth is not permanent. It is temporary. Our life is temporary. So, and God is very fair, no? God is very good. Why? If you have wealth of 5, 10, 20 or whatever, three figure, million or even billion, God does not give you the equivalent of the same time to enjoy your wealth. He won't give you 100 years to live. Or, or, or 200 years to live. He may give you about, by the time you have acquired your wealth, you can enjoy it maybe for 10 to 30 years. You won't say, oh, now my wealth is 20 million. I can live 200 years. No. 100 or a little bit, or slightly older than 100, you're gone already. Look at the obituary. Very few over 100. 
And somebody once told me, in front of a presence of my coffee gang, he said, Benny, a good life is long enough, but a long life may not be good enough. What is a good life? The good life is that we must be truly rich. One, a man who is truly rich uh, have God as his master. It's not just believing in the intellectually in a creator. They want many people are like in that category. It's that having the, this God who saved us from our sinful nature. Yes, you are Christian, but you can still sin a lot. So, one. Second, he is the provider for all our needs. Not necessarily all our greed. And many times our greed brings us trouble. Third, he wants us to use our wealth, whatever we have, to bless the less privileged. Then you are considered rich. If not, you have riches, but you are not rich. Last, you store up riches for yourself, it won't be, do you any good. You are in the category of those who only think about themselves, but not rich towards God. Those who are rich towards God, not only have riches, they always think about other people. They do not hoard with money. They take money as a stewardship assignment from God. And this, then you are truly rich. I, I, I'm so amazed. One day, a guy, a gentleman came to my office, this was in the early 90s. He had a court case with his partner. Finally, he won the case. But his partner got cancer, spent a lot of money on medical fee. He chose not to collect his reward. Ultimately, God did something amazing for him. Turned his finances around, enabled him to sell his company at a much higher price, and he was able to retire comfortably without struggling for more money. So, brothers and sisters, let's take his word seriously. I will share these last verses with you in the book of Psalm 37, verse 25 to 28. How God can provide us, and God can do miracles. He's going, the coming recession, it, it may come this year or next year, I don't know. I'm not an economist, so I'm not going to predict the future. But I can tell you what the Bible says about how God will provide when the recession comes. In Psalm 37, 25 to 28, it says here, I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken. The righteous are who? Those who belong to God, not because you are righteous. All their children begging bread. They are always generous, not sometimes generous, always generous, and lend freely. The word lend freely doesn't mean anybody come you lend, no. Lend freely means you lend without charging interest. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good. Use your money to do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. The Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. You see, even in the time of recession, he will provide for us. So we are rich not because of what we have. We are rich because of who God is and who we are to Him, His blessed children. And I pray that you will get something out of this message and practice it from now onwards. God bless you. Amen. Amen.